Welcome back to the GTHL Breakout <clears throat> Podcast. I'm Steph Karate. I do communications for the GTHL, and today we're joined by a special guest, uh, an actor, stand-up comedian, the host of Canada's Family Feud, and of course, um, some would argue first and foremost, an educator and hockey coach, Jerry D. Thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. So we're going to just jump right into it and pull you back into your coaching days, which for a number of years were spent in the GTHL. Um, At first, what originally pulled you into coaching? Uh, I played hockey in university when I, you know, uh, I was a perimeter player, nothing special. And then when I graduated, I started up the hockey program back at my alma mater, which was De La Salle College. Uh, the program folded when the school went uh, private, and I started it back up from scratch. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I was trying to build a, a prep school program there, and we had a, you know, we built a dressing room and a lot of things. And um, But it was, it was a struggle uh, to kind of, you know, which I get to branch away from the hockey they were already playing. So. Um, you know, one of the parents at the time asked me if I wanted to instruct her at a hockey school. And I started working for Brett Callaghan, who, you know, was well known uh, in the NHL at the time he played. And then, of course, teaching hockey. And and then another parent through that asked me if I wanted to coach. So I uh, my brother was and still is very prominent in the GTHL coach, Shoulder, And, you know, he gave me a... Uh, a lot of good advice and you know he seemed to like it so I uh yeah, I started my first team with uh Paul Higgins <laughs> who was uh a former enforcer with the Leafs and my brother knew him they both played at a uh, Henry at Henry Carr which was a strong junior program and so I coached with Paul and then uh went from an assistant coach there with the Nats to my own team uh with Wexford and Don Mills and kind of just did it for as many years as I, as I did. And I, and I miss it and I enjoyed it. And uh, now I'm coaching my son's house league team. So I'm kind of back into it. And that's, that's about as far as oh. <laughs> Well, it's good that you're back on the bench in some capacity, but uh, it's been said that <clears throat> Coach Jerry is a lot different than comedian Jerry. Uh, do you want to give us some insight into your coaching style? Yeah, I mean, I, I think... You know, I I had a player, uh, Johnny Duco, who I I saw him. Johnny coaches Ryerson's men's team, and uh, I coached Johnny at Wexford. And, you know, I remember him saying that once because I came out and ran a Ryerson practice a couple years ago, and I just thought it was going to be this comedy skate. And I I actually (laughs) ran a practice, and they were kind of like, what the hell was that? Um, But yeah, it was intense. I I was uh, uh, wanted to win. I wanted the kids to get better. I did try to keep it lighthearted, but you know, I I wasn't a comedian at that time either. I was I was uh, you know probably 26 when I started, and um, yeah, I mean you know there's I you know the the GTHL where I coached or any minor hockey at at a high level. I coached AAA, and it's intense. It's it's competitive uh maybe to a fault sometimes and uh you get wrapped up in it you know as much as anyone else um so yeah i mean it there wasn't a lot of room for comedy coaching Mm triple a hockey to be honest i mean everyone you know the parents get very involved and i i had a good group of parents every time I, i i like to think i did but at the end of the day it's you know still ice time battles and parents having complaints and their suggestions. And so there there wasn't a lot of, there wasn't a lot of comedy in it, to be Mm -hmm. honest. So it it was, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I was a a, a good coach. I was good at managing and the players. And, you know, I think there's a lot of good coaches out there in AAA and I think a lot of horrible coaches in AAA and it's, uh, it's a problem because, you know, I spent five years to get a teaching degree, um, six really. And, and I spent five minutes to get a coaching job. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a, it's, it becomes recruiting. I think is wrong. Uh, but if you don't recruit, 
you know, it's not supposed to be recruiting, but we all know it is. And if you don't recruit, you're, you're in last place. And that's, you know, that's, that's not what I, I mean, I never really took over strong teams, uh, 10th and 11th place teams. And I don't know if any of my kids that I ever coached went on to play after college. Um, some did, but uh, maybe a couple games in pro, but you know, I can't think of any NHL guys that came from my team. So I, the problem I think is that a lot of these parents and kids think they're on their way to the NHL and it's such a small fraction of it. So I think what's different with my hockey and triple a hockey is the coaches also have aspirations sometimes um, to move up to coach. And uh, that can, you know, fog your, your sort of your, your job of what you're supposed to really be there for. So, but I loved it. I miss it. Um, you know, it, it comes with the territory that it's competitive and the parents are involved. And uh, as I said, I, I was pretty fortunate. I had, you know, for the most part, really good parents and, you know, enjoyed it. But uh, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was serious. It was a job. You, you had to do well. And I think if you don't recruit well, um, you know, and I said this to Scott when he texted me, I said, look, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Like there's a lot of problems in minor hockey. I'm not talking GTA jump to minor hockey. And the biggest problem is one, the disparity in the levels at AAA now. Mm-hmm. And two is the, um, you know, the, the recruiting. It becomes this dad or mom who can get players and then the dad coaches it or, or the, the coach coaches it. And, you know, just because you coached, played junior or played in the NHL, doesn't make you a good coach for 12 and 13 and 14 year olds. So there's really no proper assessment of coaching for, for minor hockey. It's it, like it, who can do, it, you know, and who, 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 who uh, can recruit at the higher levels. Well, with that, if there was one thing that you would like to see change that as- aspect, what would it be? So I wrote an article 10 years ago, more, 15 years ago, called 4A Hockey. And that's what I would love to see is not triple A, quadruple A hockey. And it's, you get invited, you try out. There's actually a tryout because we don't seem to have tryouts anymore as much as we call them tryouts. And you pick 80 kids or whatever number of kids and you split it into four teams and halfway through the year, you reassess the standings and players can move from the blue team to the red team. And, and the whole point of it was to try to create one goal games, two goal games, three goal games. You know, when I, when I, I finished coaching Wexford tier two with, with a guy named Kevin, Redd, who to me was just such a great person and a great coach that I learned so much from. But when I got to coach on a bench in junior A, you know, junior B, whatever you want to call it, but it's tier two, junior A. And we had so many great players that did go on and play, uh, you know, McConvey and uh, Marco Rosa and, and Wires and Andy Noto, who's the goalie coach for Pittsburgh right now. Like we had stacked teams, Greg Hogaboom, like they were really good. Matt Foy, who went to the OHL and tore it up. I mean, when I saw that at that level, you know, there was all about one goal game. Two games. It was nine nothing and one twenty seven nothing. I saw the other day in a, in an under ten triple A game, and I tweeted about it. Um, so four A hockey, there needs to be. Let's just get the top four teams, and you have relegation, and you can move up from triple A to. But there's got to be something where there's trying to create parity, and and. One game a week and focus on skills. Because when I saw them at Junior A, I'm like, God, some of these guys still don't have a backhand. Like at Junior A, they're, they don't have, you know, they, they try to take everything on the forehand or they, they don't have a strong enough backhand, so they move it to their forehand. I mean, so many, they can't cross over to the left as well as the right. This was at Junior A. So, um, but it's focus is winning. And let's be honest, the focus at AAA is winning. Well, and it's and interesting that you, that, you, that you mentioned uh, uh, the skill aspect and really focusing <clears> on <throat> developing those skills. And, and new this year, um, Hockey Canada has implemented player pathways um, 
And it's definitely less about the score and more about developing players. So they took place before uh, tryouts in September and it had, you know, it was, it was ice provided. We had, uh, you know, um, development uh, instructors out on the ice and it was just ice time that you could go to as many as you wanted and just got those skill and basic skills working on and how do you think this is a, a yeah, but step in the right direction? You no, know, I think it is, but let's be honest. You know, my son played double A or, or sorry, select us and he wasn't very good, but he didn't take it very seriously and neither did I at the time. So, but you know, it became, Hey, uh, so-and-so's building a good team for U nine. Like this is six. Mm -hmm. Like they're, they're already trying to build a team for U nine. Now this guy might not coach or he might like, I have a friend coaching in the 2012 age group, which is my, my son's age. And he should be coaching. He was a phenomenal player. Uh, he's a phenomenal person. He knows what he's doing. And I love it. It doesn't always happen that way. So it becomes who's building a team. You know, there's, there's a brick tournament for the first year. And there's this, you got to get on the brick team because I don't even know what it is. And it's, that's the team that's going to be stacked to go to the brick tournament in Edmonton. I mean, it's, you know, in that age group, there's a team, I won't say they are, that are getting beat 7 nothing, 21 nothing, 14 nothing. Now, I know they don't post the scores during the game, but they're posted on your website. I don't know what anyone gets out of that. I don't know what the coaches are thinking going up to 27 nothing. I know it's hard to not try, but there's ways. You know, I remember my brother coached one of the greatest GTHL teams ever. I mean, and it, it was a team that had Skinner, Toffoli, Devontae Smith, Pelly, uh, um, uh, Sagan. It had Chase Bell. I mean, this 92 team was phenomenal. And when he would beat a team, he would take a hooking penalty or too many men on the ice and, you know, subtly go down to a five on three. Like, there's ways to do it. So the problem in minor hockey at the higher levels, which is all I can really speak to, I've seen a little bit of half league, which is another story, is it's about winning. And if anyone wants to deny that, they're foolish. It's about winning. Now, you might get a coach. You know, I remember a coach, Paul Titanic, and God, what a great person, what a great coach. You get coaches like that. You get a lot of good, because there's a lot of great coaches. But then you unfortunately get some that it's like, I'm going to build a great team and I'm going to, we're going to win 13, nothing, but you're not ready when those kids go to junior to win four, three, mm -hmm. because the defensive game, the coach, everyone's happy. They're winning the guys getting Johnny's seven goals. Tommy's getting four and everyone's happy. So there's no development goes on for those kids unless they're doing it on their own, which a lot of them do. Um, yeah, I think the focus has to go from just trying to focus on, sure, you got to win, I get it, but where are tryouts? Where I don't know if that cycle will ever be broken now, because if you try to be that coach, like I did, and you try to leave two spots open at tryouts, legitimate spots, you're going to be in 10th, 11th place, or you're going to get beat 13 nothing. You so don't go out and try to get players and get a package deal you're you're coming in last place in triple a and i i never cared i never really cared if i was in last place i i mean i cared i guess i cared that you know you wanted to win but for me i wasn't going to go through all that and beg players i sat in a player's house at 13 years old i went to his house like an idiot and tried to get him to come play for me and great family great kid but I look back and his first question to me was, can I be captain? I mean, I was 26. If I, I'd never do that. You so, know, it should be the way around. So if there was one main message that you wish coaches today would realize, what would that be? Well, are we talking AAA? Are we talking House League? What, what are we talking? Because it is a different way to coach. It, you do have to try to win at AAA. I'm not stupid. 
And in terms but of competitive it, coaching. In terms of competitive coaching, remember that most of these kids are not going to the NHL. Remember that. And remember, you're probably not. And remember that you, you, you can't forget their kids. I think that's the biggest, the biggest message I would have at 14, 15, 16. You know, like, look, look at, ask yourself how important is it that I go to this and win? How important is it? Well, you know, I, it's just, I got to win. I got, this, is, this is the most important thing. I got to win this playoff series. I got to win this tournament. Gotta, how important is it that I win? The problem you'll run into is you probably won't coach very long because the parents, it's all about winning too, for the most part. Not the no. most part, but a lot of parents have the blinders on that, you know, I used to coach high school hockey and the number of players that would come up to me and go, I can't play tonight, sir. I have a practice with my AAA team. I'm like, really? Like you're, you're 14, <laughs> you can't play a high school game and then three hours later go to a practice. And it was coming from this mentality that, yeah, like I'm, you know, my draft year is coming up soon. And, and, and none of those kids ever made it. And even the best kid I ever coached in high school played nine games in it. It is so hard, you know, and I, I had kids like Stamkos and Tavares on the ice at my camps and they were, those kids, both, most of their hockey was in a backyard rank getting better. I, I would bet if you asked them, it was playing in, in their backyard rinks on ponds in Markham and in Oakville and just having fun. And they got so good. Well, and but you're, this, you're yeah, a modern this, hockey parent now, and you've touched on, one, just having fun with the game on, on those outdoor <clears> rinks. But you've mentioned the message for, for coaches but then what would that message be after so many years of being in the game in different capacities from a player to coaching? What is it, is that message for parents today? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of messages and, and I think the message is, which is easy to do. I, my daughter's a competitive golfer and I get caught up in it myself. It's just try not to, you know, get live too vicariously through them. It's, it's, it's exciting. I, you know, I don't know what it is as a parent. It's exciting to think of your son or your daughter playing in the Olympics, for example, as a hockey player or the world juniors or whatever. It's exciting to think of that. I don't know, but it's gotta be their dream. And sometimes we get caught up in it's our dream as a parent. And if it's their dream, your job is to guide them um, and, and put them in situations to be successful. And I, and I you know, I think if we had a, if we had a video team uh, and, and every coach in AAA or minor hockey was mic'd on the bench, half of them, you wouldn't want your kid around anymore. You'd be like, oh my God, like it's just, well, maybe not half because there's so many great coaches, but You'd be surprised what's, what's, you know, I was always a teacher first and a coach second, and now I'm a parent first. Um, you know, and, and that, and that's, it's easy to get caught up in it, but we've seen it. I've seen fights in the crowd with parents. How does that get to a point? You know, because one parent stayed up, their son got stuck by the other kid. And so you, he yells at that kid. I've seen it happen in a house league game the other day. The coach of the 10-year-old house league in a church league was cursing on the bench at a player on my team for tripping a kid or something. Cursing. At, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I didn't even say anything. I'm like, this is just so ridiculous. So there's a lot of things that are great about hockey, and that's obvious. And the best thing I tell my kids on our team is the dressing room is the best part. And unfortunately, sometimes as adults, we muddy that and we have to just try to remember or ask yourself, is this so my kid goes far and maybe puts on an NHL jersey one day? Because if it is, okay, that's a great dream to have, but it's got to be their dream. It's got to be their dream. Well, and I do want to get your opinion real quick, because um, you did yourself play House League and Select. 
and I want to take it back to the grassroots a little bit. How important do you think these levels are for our game? Look, my story is unique. It, 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 they're very important. I, my parents were immigrants from Scotland. My brother was 11 when he started hockey. And he ended up getting an NCAA scholarship because he was just such a great player, a great athlete, and, and he had everything. Um, so for, for us, House League was where we started. Then I played Select. The idea of playing – my brother played AAA. The idea of me playing – AAA never even existed. I played, so my path, I played one year of university hockey at St. FX as a walk-on, best time ever. Um, you know, I'm on the ice with, against guys that were drafted to the NHL. I played, the highest level of hockey I played was high school hockey. So, the, you know, sorry, that's the dog. The point is, you don't, you don't, you know, it's not always who does it the most and who does it the most often and who shoots the most puck. Sometimes it's just in late, you're a late bloomer. And I think one of the problems with the whole system is we decide on these kids and we write them off at 16 where some kids, 23, they come into it. And I was an example of that kid. But my aspirations were never to go pro. So for me, House League and Select, man, I couldn't wait for my one, one game of Select. I couldn't wait for my one game, my one house league game at, at every week. And I had one practice and one game. And that was all it ever was. And it, it didn't, you know, I played against guys in, in, the, in, in this CIS, the U sport, that would have played AAA for 10 years. And they were, there we were at the same level. They were maybe third line, I was third line. Like it didn't make a difference at the end of the day. So I think it's, it's, there's so many great things about the game, but there's different paths for everybody. And I, I don't like how it, to me, the confidence is everything and keeping a kid's confidence up and realizing that it's not about going to the next level, but we can easily get caught up in it as coaches and parents. And that to me can muddy the water sometimes. Absolutely. And, and just the last thing here is you did uh, make note of, of your university playing career and Often university hockey youth sports is – Career. Under, I don't know if it's a career. <laughs> we'll give it to you. It counts. It's understated in Canada. But um, for those who have seen games at this level and know it's really good hockey, and you know that there's guys who were drafted and had awesome junior careers, do you wish this level maybe got some more attention? Yeah, I do, and I think it is. And there's, you're starting to get – you know, I never would have made that league now. Like, that league now is full of top, you know – Quebec major and Western Hockey League and Ontario Hockey League players that you know, maybe, you know, wanted a school route or um, just missed the boat. You know, like I said, maybe they're, you know, your draft year in, in the NHL, you're what, 18? Mm -hmm. Maybe they got really good. But that's sad. I'm sorry. Yeah, I had to know at 18. Like, I, I think it's crazy, but you do need an age when you're drafted. So that's why some of them can go on and backdoor in. But there's some great stories. Uh, I know my alma mater, St. FX, has a lot of guys that are – UMB has a great program that are, you know, coming back to playing in the AHL. You know, um, AHL is, a, is a, you know, as you know, is one step from the NHL, and they're, they're starting to get called up. So um, there's a lot more of that happening. It's, it's a really good league. We just – you know, I often – look at the NCAA playing again, like University of New Brunswick or, or one of those strong teams in the, in the U sports would compete against NCAA teams, but they're older. The big, you know, that's, that's the, that's the difference sometimes, um, you know, but other than that, I think, yeah, it's a great league. It's, it's, it, we're seeing more players. I wish the, I wish the NHL would look at it more, but they're usually not in that league by the NHL draft year. So. I mean, it's a complex system, right? Well, and we appreciate you taking the time to give us all your thoughts. It's, it's a worthy conversation. And, and I, I do want to make note that uh, obviously the women's Olympic hockey team for Canada was just announced. You've been a big supporter of the women's game. You're fairly <laughs> open about it. But what most of all do you want people to know or recognize about the women's game today? Um, well, yeah, I – there's a lot that needs to change for, you know, it's just uh, I'm, what I'm trying to help and lend my voice is to 
women's hockey, but it's, you know, trying to find a way that the best women in the world are, there's a little more sort of a closing of the gap from the best men in the world. And that's kind of where we're stuck is they're just not in that same, even in that same stratosphere as far as what they're paid and everything. So if there's any little things I can do, uh, you know, I got to know Jana Hefford really well in my travels and, you know, she's a hall of famer and I'm really glad they're starting to recognize women in the hall of fame, but I have two daughters. Uh, they don't play hockey, but if they did, I would want them to have the same dream, maybe play in their professional league one day. And so that it doesn't end after college. And, you know, I think it's great. They're going to the Olympics, but, you know, the fact that they would play professional hockey and have to have a side hustle or a side job, that just looked wrong to me. So that's when I kind of realized, wow, this is, this is very unfair in a ways and we need to try to fix that. So I think now these young girls, you know, I thought it was great. They had young female hockey players introduce them to who made the team. And I think these are their role models. And, uh, yeah, I thought we'd be there sooner. You know, when you look back at Jaina uh, and Goyette and Dupuy and, and Haley and all these great players that were still, we're still, they're still fighting to get some, some level of, you know, parity, some level. They're not asking for a complete parity with male, but some level. So um, I'm just trying to add my voice where I can. Well, we're certainly uh, wishing the women's team all the best of luck. There are uh, luckily three GTH alumni on there as well. Natalie Spooner, Claire Thompson, Laura Stacey. So we wish them the best of luck. And, you know, we, again, we really appreciate your time, Jerry. We'll, we'll throw it to you for any final thoughts you want to get out there. No, I just, you know, the GTHL was, was a great part of my life and I'm thankful for that. It, it was part of my playing years in select and house league. And it was a huge part of my coaching. And I, you know, now I'm, I'm coaching again with my son. So um, we can point out the problems that are in hockey or this and that, but me, it, overall, it's a positive experience. The GTHL was always a positive experience for my brother and I, and um I have so many great memories of that that I, uh, you know, will will cherish and and hopefully create some more with my son um, as he continues to play. Well, it's definitely the root of it, the uh, the memories and all the time that hockey gives us for sure. Well, we're, we're gonna we're gonna let you go, Jerry. We've, again, we really really appreciate your time and and we wish you the best of luck with everything that is to come. Awesome! Thank you for having me.